this morning has already taken a turn. We, I got up and I had some leftover coffee from yesterday. So I was drinking that and kind of enjoying the quiet morning. And we have to be down at the new house by 8 a.m. to meet the movers for day two of moving. And I have a bunch of things planned that I'm going to do today. And I go to plug in my straightener before I get the shower because that's what I like to do. So as soon as I get out, because I wasn't going to wash my hair, I like my straightener to be warm. Well, there was no power. So I tried four different plugs because there's four different plugs in the bathroom. I clicked the GFS, GFI, nothing. And I know that when I was in the kitchen getting my coffee this morning, there were power because there was power because on the oven and the on the two ovens, I noticed that the time was wrong. It said it was like 12 something. So we have no power. So we just packaged up a bunch of stuff. So we're going to zip down to the house and we're going to go shower and get ready real quick down there. And <laughs> it's just funny. We slept great. The first night was wonderful. The bed was cozy. Um, it was so nice getting up and being on a one level and just walking into the kitchen and then walking into the living room. And I don't know, there's something about like a ranch or a one level that's just wonderful. And so I'm, I'm just really, I'm excited. It's just funny that the first morning we have no power and we do have a certain amount of water because we're on a well, we need electricity to pump water out of the well. But because you have a pressure tank, you have water until it runs dry and then it's not going to continue to refill the pressure tank. So I may have been able to take a shower. I have no idea how long the pressure would last or how much water is in the pressure tank. But I didn't want to get halfway through the shower and then have no water. So this definitely confirms the fact that we are getting a generator. If not having power on the first day says anything, it means we need a generator. So... We are going to head down there and we're going to start this really busy, busy day. They just pulled in and we were able to shower and get ready. I am going to give them kind of direction. They are almost done. Ah! The main things they have to do are the big appliances like the washer and dryer, our extra refrigerator, our two deep freezers. And those deep freezers have to be emptied before they can move them because you can't move a deep freezer full of meat. It's too heavy. So while they pack the rest of the house, I'm gonna go run to Winks, that hardware store where we bought all the new uh, poles and our doorknobs for the new house. And those doorknobs are in, we had to order them. And so I think to save some time because all the doors are painted and everything, I'm gonna go run and get those so that Josh later today or tomorrow or whenever he has time, he can put those doorknobs on. We were able to get a little bit of breakfast and some coffee in us. And so now we're gonna head so I can show you. This is the garage. They've got quite a bit of it done. Those are my beehives I need to paint, so I'm excited about that. But these are the two deep freezers that if I don't get here to empty them, then I gave Josh direction so he knows how to empty them, but I should be back in time in order to empty them for the movers. I almost drove away with the keys to the shop and that's where they're gonna start packing. Josh has a ton of lumber that he purchased a long time ago for projects that we never got to the projects. And so they're gonna pack that up first. So this is all that wood that needs to be moved. It was kind of fun to be able to have the opportunity to go on a little field trip while the boys are working on packing. This is the downtown Portland area. And we're not actually going into the downtown because we don't have to cross the river. That is the Willamette River. But I do have to go pretty close. So I thought I would show you a little bit of the city I grew up in. I grew up in Northeast Portland. And I absolutely love the city I grew up in. And we are going to go to Winks Hardware to pick up the doorknobs we purchased. And that is a hardware store that has been family owned since I think it was 1909. And I absolutely love this hardware store. We got the goods, but unfortunately they didn't have the strike plates we need. So Josh is gonna go ahead and order those online. Because we added thicker trim than what is standard, then if you don't have a strike plate over the trim where the little latch goes from the door, you're gonna damage the trim. So we definitely need those before we install the doorknobs, but I think we're gonna have to order them online. 
By the time I went into Portland and got back to the house, they were ready for Josh to start unpacking the freezers. So he took a bunch of the freezer stuff and put them in bags and put them in these black totes so that they would stay nice and cool. That was a bag of oats. When I order in bulk, I like to put any grains or flowers in the freezer for at least 24 hours or basically until I get around to them just to kill any bugs or anything. I also, because I have deep freezers, I like to use these hard sided totes because it makes getting to the bottom of the freezers a lot easier. Josh was helping me the whole time kind of continue to unpack these freezers and it was great to be able to do this because it was a good clean out, especially before real serious harvest happens. I was able to do a really good inventory on what we had, what we, you know, what would be good to put more up from the garden or buy from local farmers. And I was able to get rid of a few things and give them to the chickens. There were a couple things that were a little freezer burned in here. And it was a great opportunity to go ahead and just reassess and do a little inventory because I had to touch anything anyway. The very last things they are going to be putting in the moving truck are these deep freezers. And so we wanted to wait until the last minute to take everything out of the freezers just so that they would stay as cold as possible. Another thing that was really great was getting to assess what things I could maybe can to get out of the freezers to make more room and it just was a great timing for that and it was really great having Josh's help and it was really great that we were not the ones that ended up having to move all these totes because they were quite heavy. The first freezer they were going to move is the one that Josh is getting into right now. That was actually a freezer that the previous owners of this house left and I think it's from the 70s so at some point we are going to be replacing that but for now we're going to continue to use it and move it. So all those totes are packed and then we did store some stuff just in the freezer but in bags so as soon as they say go we can take it out and they can move the freezer. Upstairs is completely done. Downstairs they're just finishing some miscellaneous stuff. Freezers are now packed. Josh did a great job with that. Two things that they aren't going to move are pressure washer and one other thing I can't remember because there's gasoline in it and they don't move anything with gasoline or alcohol. So how are you? Great. We brought the truck down or we're taking the truck up because we have all this recycling. So I can take this to the transfer station or dump, take care of it for free. The other thing was the wood chipper. They won't take that because of the gasoline. So they're probably 90, 98% done. We have a lawnmower that we are getting rid of on Facebook Marketplace and it comes with this dumpy thing, but there's actual garbage in here. So we need to load that up to take care of that. We were blessed with this lawnmower from my parents and the previous owners left at the new house their lawnmower. So I'm excited to be able to bless someone else with this one. This area is looking a lot better, a lot less stuff. That's going to the dump or we'll donate it. Everything else looks just some random miscellaneous tools that need to be taken care of. Oh, gasoline cans, they won't take those. So we will have to take those. I doubt we're gonna go ahead. I bet we'll just leave these cinder blocks here because I don't think we need them. And yeah, it's looking pretty good some random bins and some garbage we need to take care of. Oh, it's amazing how much stuff just collects over the years. We've only been here for two and a half years. Since they don't seem to need my help right now, and it's wonderful outside, it's about 75, I'm gonna go ahead and do some watering. My green stalks have been suffering a little bit, not because of the green stalks. You guys have seen how beautiful they've gotten but because I have not been watering them like I should. And at my next place, or at the next place, I'm definitely gonna have them hooked up to some irrigation. But also my tomatoes and tomatillos are not on an irrigation system. So I have to make sure, oh man, my cabbage is looking so good. There's my cabbage down here. And weeds, lots of weeds. So I'll take care of those weeds. That's okay, it's the reality. One reason I love tomatillos is they just attract pollinators. There's a bumblebee here and there's probably about 10 or 15 of them throughout here. So they attract the pollinators into my garden, which is what I want. 
Now I gotta get this water going the correct direction. I'm gonna try to water a little bit lower so the bees can enjoy the top parts. I need to start trellising these up a little bit more. There's some tomatoes on the ground there and I don't want that. It was so fun taking a few minutes out of the craziness of what this week has been to just focus on my garden and focus on getting these tomato plants trellised back up. I really am excited to see all the fruit that is on these plants. I have this feeling every year that nothing is going to grow and then all of a sudden stuff starts to grow and it's just a magical thing. My winter squash patch here is not on an irrigation system either, so I did take about 10 minutes and let the water water these pumpkin plants. And this pumpkin is getting huge. I'm gonna let this just go here for 20 minutes or so. We already got this watered nicely. I'm gonna go see what I can help them with. I should have known better than to leave a waterer going because around seven o'clock this night, it hit me all at once. I think the waterer is still going and I was able to call a family member that lives close and yes, it was. So they were able to turn it off for me. Looks like they got all the patio furniture and the garlic. They are pulling out and we're gonna go meet them at the new place. There was some kind of miscommunication on the meat for some reason and the things that were in the freezer. They thought we were going to move all that stuff that was in the freezer. I'm not exactly sure where they thought we were going to put it and how we were going to move it. So when they packed the truck today, they didn't pack it as condensely as they could have. So they ended up having to take some stuff off the truck in order to fit all the contents of the freezer in the truck. And I think because of that, they kind of missed out on a few of those final details I'm gonna have to be back here tomorrow to meet the new flooring people. Um, we are getting the new flooring, you know where I ripped out that carpet and what? Okay, um, we have to head up so we can meet them with the keys. But what was I saying? So there's there's a few things that were just left behind. So probably two or three boxes tomorrow, I'll be able to come here since I have to meet the carpet people anyway, pack those things up and get them up to the new house. So anyway, just a little bit of confusion little bit of lack of attention to detail for those final few things, but that's okay. I'll have the ability to come in tomorrow to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and head up so that I can meet them there with the keys. I beat them up here. I don't know how that happened. They must've stopped for food. But I'm down in the basement because we did decide to go ahead and put the freezers down here. You all recommended that would be the best thing and I totally agree with you. The biggest thing is we have to figure out where to put it. Ideally, I would like to put it on this wall, but the only plug that's down here is right underneath this window. So I could put one in front of this window and then one in front of this window, but I really don't want them in front of the window. So the other option would be to put them right here, but then I need Josh's help to move these shelves. I was going to come, I rushed down here cause I was like, I gotta make a spot for them because there are some different things that, you know, have been brought down here. So I was like, I gotta make a space for it. and. And I think I need Josh's help and I need his help figuring out where exactly we're gonna put these freezers. When I asked you all, where do you think I should put these freezers, whether in the basement or in the garage, many, many of you had recommended putting it in the basement and I greatly appreciate that. I think that was the right choice. I think it's going to be super convenient to have all my food storage in one area. So making inventory and having a good managing system of this and making sure things are rotated is going to be just really, really great. So thank you for everyone who gave your input on that. I greatly appreciate it. To be honest, at this point, I'm feeling a little cranky, a little hangry. My parents have been out of town for the last two weeks. They just got into town yesterday. They are picking us up lunch, so I'm gonna get these freezers full. As soon as they get here, we're gonna sit down and eat. And I think I need that because I can just feel my crankiness <laughs> level up. And so I wanna get these full. I wish I had time to de-ice and defrost. Just don't have the time to do that right now. But that's okay, that's okay. I am grateful that I have at least an inventory now in my head. What I have 
and I know exactly where everything is. There were a couple things that I went ahead and I gave to the chickens because they were either freezer burned. I just knew we wouldn't need them. I also like to use bags in my deep freezers to organize along with those hard sided totes. I like to put like things with like things. I buy a half a cow about every two years and I buy a whole hog about every two years as well. So when you do that, you get a lot of same type of things like ground beef, ground sausage, and that could be breakfast and Italian or however you get it. And so if I put everything in a tote, then I know that everything in that tote is the same thing. So one of my freezers is mostly for meat and the other one is mostly for fruits and veggies and freezer meals. And that's the one that I'm working in right now. I also have some bags of salmon in that one freezer. Josh is coming down here and asking me where we should put our refrigerator. We do have a second refrigerator that mostly just holds things like beverages for most of the year. But when it comes to big harvest season, like what's going to be happening in the next about two weeks or so, it'll hold my bulk produce. I need to get out there and actually harvest all those cabbages. And cabbage from the garden will last in a refrigerator for a good solid two to three months, depending on how you store it. And so he was asking me where I wanted to put that fridge. We did decide to go ahead and put that refrigerator in the garage because like I mentioned, most of the year it holds things like beverages and stuff. And so when we have parties or just people over, I want to be able to have an area that's fully stocked and if they want something I can say go check out the fridge and help yourself to anything that is in that refrigerator. One big project checked off the list. All the freezer stuff, cross my fingers, <laughs> is in these two freezers now. Glad to have that done. I had just had this nightmare thought that I told Josh. I was like, wouldn't it be a nightmare if a box or a bag of something that was supposed to go in the freezer ended up being left out and missed in the basement? And luckily, nothing was forgotten and everything made its way back into the freezer. And while I was finishing that project, they were continuing to unpack and get everything put away. We ended up putting this lumber in what is eventually going to be Josh's shop. I am so grateful that we hired movers. There is no way Josh and I could have done this by ourselves. I'm getting very cranky <laughs> and I'm aware of that. So I'm just putting myself in a little timeout over here. I'm sitting down. I'm watching our neighbors are getting their hay bales put together. My parents are on their way to bring some food. I think my blood sugar is getting low. They're just finishing unpacking the last bit that is all like garage stuff, shop stuff. So it's all mostly Josh's stuff. So he's just telling them where he wants it. And so I don't really have much input on that. My mom called and asked, what do you want for lunch? And I honestly was like, I am out of making decisions right now. I can't even think about, I could not even comprehend or process what would be good for lunch. So I said, you're gonna have to call Josh and ask him because I, I just can't make another decision right now because I know I'm gonna have to make more decisions. So that's, you know, like one less decision and I will be happy with whatever. So I'm just gonna sit here, enjoy, relax. They set up the outdoor patio furniture. So I'm in the shade, the, um, the umbrella is up. And so it's just really nice. And I'm going to do a little bit of relaxing, a little bit of recharge because we still have a lot more we have to get done. I don't know how much more, it's about 1.35 I think right now. So I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna get done if I'm gonna start unpacking tonight or what the plan is, but my mom and dad are gonna come over and they're willing to help. And so it just depends on kind of what we decide to do. Hey friends, it's the next morning. I wanna get you caught up since last time we were together. The movers finished around three o'clock and they also did something that was super, super helpful for us. They took the big black wall to the dump. They also took a couple other things from our last house to the dump and some of the construction stuff to the dump. So that was a huge, huge, huge blessing. 
a weight lifted off my shoulders because I wasn't one sure how we were going to get that big black wall to the dump without cutting it in half. And because there was drywall around it, our transfer station slash dump, the same thing, they only take drywall from the public on very specific days because I think it can have asbestos in it. I'm not exactly sure, but they only have like one day a month where they take it. And because they are a business, they could just take it any day. And so that was a huge blessing. And then my parents came over, we sat and we had a wonderful lunch. They had been out of town, so it was really good to get caught up. And we sat there for probably an hour and a half or two hours. And they left around 4.30 or so. So maybe we were sitting for about an hour and a half. And then Josh and I, we were done. <laughs> we were mentally and physically exhausted. And so we just sat and hung out and watched a little bit of TV. We made um, just a sandwich. And Josh got two new vacuums and he's, he loves vacuums. And so he set up his new vacuums he's super excited about. And we just hung out together. And now it's bright and early the next day. I just met um, our the lady who's um, willing to come and help me do a deep clean on the house because we need to go down and meet the carpet people this morning. And we get to pick up our dogs. We haven't had our dogs in two days and we are so excited to have them back with us. I'm so grateful that our dog sitter was able at the very last minute to come and take them. That was a huge blessing just with the doors open and all that stuff. Um, as much as we miss them, I think they probably had more fun and it was less mental on us to just, you know, not have to worry about that. But we are ready to have them home. And Josh and I, we've got a couple errands we need to run this morning. And then I'm going to come back up and hopefully help um, get the cleaning done. It's a little bit hard to do some cleaning because there's kind of like boxes everywhere. But we're just going to do our best. And then we can start unpacking. And I also need to go to the P.O. box because I haven't been to the P.O. box in a while. And I'm excited to do that. We are just going to have a good day, Josh and I, together. And so I just want to say thank you for taking time out of your day with us. And I really, really appreciate it. If you want to watch more of my videos, I will put some videos right here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I want to say thank you for being you and spending time with us. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.